Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Sophie album from Sophie. Yes, here we have a new full-length album from game-changing producer, singer, and songwriter Sophie, a name that should need no introduction at this point, at least to the crowd of people who clicked on this review the fastest, eager fans who most likely already have a sense of Sophie's massive impact on a lot of the more creative and subversive sonic trends that have gained more and more ground in pop music in recent years, not to mention the fact that she has worked with the likes of Rihanna, as well as Madonna and Charlie XCX, uh, who tributes Sophie on a key track from her new hit Brat record. But for some, the question may still remain. How did Sophie's notoriety get to this point? Well, as a pioneering producer and DJ in the early and mid-2010s, uh, Sophie had a huge hand in crafting some of the most forward-thinking and cutting-edge sounds in pop today. Go back and listen to a lot of her early singles that were eventually uh, compiled in to that product project. Listen to some of the work that she did alongside a PC music artists like A.G. Cook. Listen to the production that she had on Charlie XCX's Boundary Pushing Vroom Vroom EP. These works and more all culminate into uh, what feels like the shape of pop to come, or at the very least, a snapshot of sounds and aesthetics that are more widely accepted and understood now. Now, as Sophie began to make more of a name for herself as a producer, it became became clear that her ideas and talents were too great for her to uh, merely just continue playing a supportive role for other artists. As she started to broaden her sound and artistic image with killer and now classic art pop anthems as well as crushing postmodern bangers such as It's Okay to Cry, Face Shopping, and Pony Boy, which are just a few songs that would be included on her fantastic full-length studio debut, Oil of Every Pearl's on Insides which for sure as an album is great on its own, but simultaneously it was a record that uh, I think still showed Sophie in a pretty early stage of her career and uh, showcased endless potential. However, a proper follow-up sophomore album uh, never happened as we lost Sophie in a tragic fall uh, just several years after the release of Every Pearl, which obviously was an immeasurable loss and left a lot of fans with a question of what if and a posthumous album seemed kind of out of the question. If her fan base has proven to be anything, it's discerning, and many of its members have voiced rightful skepticism of such a thing. But a posthumous album now exists nonetheless, and it's been brought to fruition by her brother and sometimes sound engineer, Benny Long. But while he's had the most primary hand in completing this record, he has been careful in public statements to make clear that uh, whatever changes or mix alterations he had to make to these tracks, they were minimal, and that the album itself and the track list were nearly complete, which I get why Benny would want to put that out there, because protective fans obviously want to hear something that is unaltered or reflective of Sophie's artistic vision. But you also have to wonder, with the fashion in which this album is being released, is the material on it even properly finished? Is this work Sophie would have released in its current state, and will it reflect positively on her legacy? Sadly, there are more questions than answers, and for what it is, all we really have to work from is this album, which is a pretty massive statement of a project, mind you. 16 tracks, packed with features, over an hour of material. One side of me is excited to see this, but then another side of me is actually listening to the thing, and I can't be the only person who feels like the detail, quality, and writing on these tracks is just massively insufficient. Even if this record was not a posthumous album and it came out as it currently is presented, I think a lot of listeners could easily hear that the standards that were set by previous Sophie tracks and releases, like Every Pearl and like Product, are just not being met on this record. And there are just lots of moments that left me scratching my head, even with uh, Sophie having a reputation as a pretty experimental artist. The first leg, I will say, is pretty rough, with the tone being set by a four-minute long intro that's uh, mostly just a very murky cinematic drone 
that doesn't develop all that much outside of taking on some sounds that um, might be uh, distant dogs barking. It's kind of creepy and evocative in pockets, but as an intro for anything else other than a horror movie soundtrack. Following this, the track Raw is mostly what you would get if, uh, rather than doing a deconstructed club track, uh, Sophie instead was doing a piece of deconstructed trap. There are some interesting coincidental creative parallels too, as the track kind of sounds like scissors low if you stripped everything out of the song that made it kind of catchy and fun to listen to. I mean, the oddly detuned 808s throughout the track are uh, certainly ear-grabbing and unique, but there's just not enough going on on this song to prevent the vibes from turning awkward. I mean, rapper Josie on the track is certainly doing her best, but she does not have uh, the lyrics or the presence to really fill the gaps around such bare production. Following this, the track Plunging Asymptote is uh, another step in Sophie's excursions into breaking down club music, dance music, into this very weird post-industrial soup. But maybe this instance of it is taking things a little bit too far, especially with the title being repeatedly buried into my mind like a meme. The whole track feels like I'm just staring at a deep-fried screenshot of uh, like a Fruity Loops multi-track. Then after this, the Dome's protection offers a very windy atmospheric synth swells over which we get spoken word passages that uh, feel like I'm sitting through uh, some kind of technocrats New Age wet dream. In my mind, listening to this, I'm sitting through a dimly lit PowerPoint presentation that uh, just has me looking for the nearest exit. There are some other cuts deeper into the album that have a more conventional pop and dance appeal, like A uh, Reason Why, featuring Kim Petras, as well as Live In My Truth, but even these songs eventually hit a wall, as on the song Why Lies, the vocal contributions here uh, sound like a tone-deaf Grimes who occasionally is doing like dolphin sounds, not to mention some of the lazy half-baked rap bars like uh, save that drama for your mama, excuse me. I know Sophie's music did occasionally have a tendency to embrace absurdism, but this just feels cartoonish and deeply unserious, especially for a posthumous album that so many fans had uh, such high hopes for. There are some other tracks where Sophie's chops as an electronic music producer uh, are more the focus, but sadly the best example of that comes in the form of Berlin Nightmare, which is this jarring, grim, groovy combination of techno and house, with some pretty relentless synth bass and some uh, skittering snare breakdowns. The issue is this track was already released as a single and it's just kind of a classic case of a record's best moments being released as teasers before the album is even out. Because yeah, digging further into the deep cuts, there's not really a whole lot here, especially when you consider how tracks like Gallop uh, feel so short and unfinished compared to other tracks. It's like we're just padding uh, the album out at this point with Filler. Sadly, the weak start to this record is matched with a pretty weak finish too. We have Exhilarate, which pretty much sounds like what you'd get if Sophie was going to write a totally soulless, vaguely inspirational pop anthem with stretched, farty bass passages. I mean, if this is genuinely what Sophie was going for, B.B. Borelli is uh, an apt feature. The vibes may be rancid, but at least they're consistent. There's also Always and Forever featuring Hannah Diamond, which for sure is pretty while it's on, but this is one of several tracks on the record that while they may be palatable, even more palatable than some cuts uh, in the track list, uh, they just feel really conventional in comparison with numerous highlights from Sophie's back catalog up until this point. And after so much success being a musical maverick of sorts, I have a hard time believing that Sophie would have uh, basically set up the next stage of her career to just I don't know, play it safe? That being said, I do think the song My Forever is uh, one of the more decent cuts here, I suppose. That is if you're on the search for some spacey, futuristic version of 
uh, like a 90s Euro pop track with lots of synths and a chill tempo. I mean, the chorus doesn't contrast all that much instrumentally from the rest of the song, but the basic building blocks are there. And while the closing track does provide a very haunting message to end things off with, structurally, whatever potential this song had is uh, pretty much dashed after the uh, very jarring beat switch in the first leg, as the track kind of devolves from there and skips into a, a bunch of random changes that don't don't really bring a strong sense of finality to the record. But yeah, unfortunately this LP was uh, just a massive disappointment, despite uh, the very high hopes that I had for it, given some of the teasers, some of the singles, and the uh, high amount of effort and care that I uh, assumed would go into it, uh, given the close connections that Sophie had to all those involved with the project. I mean, it still remains that uh, a lot of the material on this record doesn't really feel all that reflective of Sophie's best work. Uh, some of it barely feels even finished. Much of it feels like kind of twittering and experimenting and shooting for something without uh, quite hitting the target, which is why I'm feeling a decent two strong three on this record. Tran, position, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Sophie of Forever.